really super excited to go over this today. Uh, Adobe XD is always kind of... Uh, been a, had, a, had a big place in my heart, uh, but this is a lightning talk, so we are going to do this very quickly. So uh, I'm going to try and cover a lot of the differences between XD and some of the other competitive software that's out there, uh, but let's figure out like what is, what is competitive software. Uh, but first, let's talk about XD. So what XD is, is this really cool program that Adobe came up with a few years ago, and it's meant specifically for experience design and UI. So it's a tool for designing and prototyping user experiences like websites, mobile apps, desktop applications, and pretty much any type of screen where users can interact with digital products. So there are a lot of other uh, apps out there, but before even these ones existed, uh, most experience design work and UI work was done in things like Photoshop, Illustrator, and InDesign. So we kind of had to work with what we had. Once UX started becoming more of a serious practice, they actually started making serious tools. So Sketch, uh, Figma, Principle, UX Pin, Envision. Uh, some of these you recognize, maybe some of them you don't, uh, but they're all about trying to get products and, uh, and, and digital experiences built as quickly as possible. Some folks have done it really well and some folks are a little bit behind the curve. So I'm a big fan of Adobe XD because I feel like it makes this process easier and faster because it provides a tool set of features that are really optimized for this experience. So the four main functions of what Adobe XD does, uh, and which they built from the ground up, uh, so it was a completely new piece of software that they started engineering about six, seven years ago. Uh, it's incredibly fast, very responsive, and it works on both Macintosh and Windows. So it works as an end-to-end -end experience design tool. Um, and the four functions that it's supposed to provide are design, prototyping, previewing, and then the big one for me is collaboration, sharing of assets, and design specs. So again, lightning talk, going to be super quick about it. So let's get and dive right in. The first thing we're going to talk about today is going to be the design elements. So the areas that I have highlighted over here, like the toolbars, the tabs, and the contextual menu, let's dive into that and take a look and see what exactly that has to offer. Oh, get out of here. So I made a quick demo of what can be built. So uh, I made a, a, a mock uh, a, a mock pro, uh, a product called a Dishy, which is like a you know, uh, you know, kind of like DoorDash or Postmates. And I'm thinking about what I want to use here. Now, I'm not going to go through all of these tools because they're pretty self-explanatory. If you want a rectangle, you can make a rectangle. If you want to make a triangle, you can make a triangle line text box, et cetera. But when I do choose one of these and start to engage on the artboard itself, you'll see the contextual menu changes to the right. So it gives me all of these options to be able to make changes based on what tool I've selected. So if I do want to start messing with text, all I have to do is click the text box, text tool, and then this entire contextual menu opens up and I'm able to choose multiple different options between alignment you know, to to font type and size and family, uh, down to you know how you want it laid out, which includes everything from having fixed sizes, auto height, auto width, all kinds of stuff. But let's get into some of the actual nitty gritty for this. So one of the things I really like about this that's different is uh, how uh, how components are treated. So components and symbols are, you know, if you're familiar with these types of tools, are kind of like, it's, it's based in atomic design, where you have an element that is the, that the highest level, like color green, it's a very specific color. Uh, you have a very, and then you have a shape around it using that green. So you build component libraries out of that. But we're not going to get too much into that. But we are, what we are going to do is create a component. So let's say I want to fill out the rest of these recent locations. What I'm gonna do is since I've already made this into a group, I'm gonna make it into an actual component. So now I create multiple states. I can create default states, I can create hover states, I can create all types of different ones, but I'm not gonna do that. But I'm gonna show you something that none of the other tools have. It's called a repeat grid. And what the repeat grid does is just hitting Control R or Apple R in your keyboard, you're able to convert any group or, or uh, component into uh, a repeatable grid. So as I pull one of these bars down, you'll see it repeats the same element. 
And if I want to go horizontal or vertical, I can do so. And if I want to expand the, uh, the buffer in between here, I can just slide it out of the way and then hide it. If I want to be able to change the content in here, I can just simply double click and start typing. So let's say, the other cool thing about repeat grids is that they're able to uh, import. So let's say you have a series of images you want to use, or you have a CSV or, uh, or, or a rich text file, which has a list of names or something that you're supposed to be using for a same, uh, for a project. So let's say you're using the same uh, demo names across your project. Uh, you can actually just click and drag that right on top and it will automatically populate depending on what format it is. So whatever you end up dropping it on, as since this is a group. So if I dropped a list of places, on this particular area, then it would populate in there. Same thing for different places. So if I have different labels and things like that that I want to have, they don't want to continuously go back and retype, I can actually make documents that are office standard and just dump them into them and it'll automatically populate. Another thing that's really cool about repeat grid is how it can work functionally. So Let's, so I've, let's say I've got all of this built out as a repeat grid, and these are all the elements that I have for my menu items. Well, it's not really going to be this big, and I do want to prototype this to be scrolling. Uh, so XD has that feature. You can come over here to this area and choose whether or not you want it to be a horizontal or vertical scroll. And since it's already in a group as a repeat grid, all I have to do is tell it that it needs to be scrollable. Now I just set my area of where I want it to scroll. So I want the scroll to start here and I want it to stop here, but I want to hide this. So let's collapse this and hide it and get it out of the way. And then we'll do the same with the artboard. Artboard's a little big, so we'll grab it. Put this up. And now you have a scrollable menu. And the cool part about XD is that if I have uh, have something already logged into, if, I, if I'm already attached or tethered, then I can actually use the software in real time and I don't have to upload it. Automatically goes to the app on my phone or tablet or other device. So if I have something that's device specific, anything that I do on XD in real time will happen um, on your preview device. I know Sketch has Mirror and Figma has a couple other, uh, has something similar, uh, but you can also preview uh, not only in browser or in app, but having the device as well makes it really handy, especially if you have certain breakpoints you're trying to achieve. That's really cool. It's pretty cool, right? So another thing that I really like that's new that most people aren't aware of is something called stacks. So let's say I have this screen, but I don't really like the spacing of this. So I'm gonna make a group out of it. And then I'm going to go over here to stack. So I'm going to say enable or disable stack. So once I click that, it analyzes the contents and the components that are already here. And it makes a best guess at what I'm going to try and do. So this is already understood that I'm going to want uh, a vertical stack because everything is stacked vertically. And then if I want to be able to change or add the padding, I can do so for every single element in that group individually. So let's say I want to add 10 pixels of padding, done. Every element inside now has 10 pixels of padding inside this group. So let's say I want to be able to make some changes within here. Well, just like the repeat grid, I can actually adjust the padding in a larger sense without actually having to move everything around. I can just select what kind of padding area I want and then realign. And also things will automatically move uh, depending on the stack if you need them to. So if I want to move just Dishy to the top, I can do so. And if I want to give it a little bit, of, a little bit more padding, easy enough. So having these really cool tools makes it very, very quick in order to just iterate, ideate, and make sure that you're spending less time you know, trying to get everything pixel perfect and just focusing on getting the work done. 
One last thing I'm gonna show you before we move to the next section is something very cool that I like called 3D transform. So this is something that's new. And let's say, and this also works with the prototyping element. If I want to, you know, normally you can, you know, make stuff bigger or smaller. You can rotate things. You know, this is all pretty standard, but what isn't standard is being able to manipulate in 3D. So now we have the ability to be able to choose X, Y, and Z axis. So if I want this to look a little bit different, or if I want to pull it in a little bit, this has complete and total 3D functionality. And this is actually replicated in their auto animate section. So when you're prototyping, you can actually set animation sequences with the three-dimensional effects. So it's non-destructive, completely vector, uh, and actually is translatable to CSS. All right, let's move to the next. That's so cool, just saying. <laughs> All right, so next let's talk about prototyping. So prototyping is a little complex. Uh, so user interactions like buttons and scrollable screens and timed animation and drag gestures and even voice recognition uh, and, and response. So it's not just like the voice that it hears. It'll, it, it, you can actually uh, use voice to talk back to you, whether you're using Siri, Cortana, uh, or, or Alexa. You're actually, you will actually be able to hear that voice come back to you when you prototype these. Uh, uh, so there's really no need to have any other type of app to prototype with. You don't need Envision. You don't need Flinto. You can just stick to XD pretty much 100%. So now you can create groups of these specific prototyping experiences by assigning artboards to flows. And that's something that's new and different. So the way flows work, I don't know if you noticed when we first looked up here, there's something up here that says flow. Now what flow means is when you go into the prototyping stage, it's where your home screen starts. And sometimes when we're doing like user testing or you know very specific type of work, most of the time we don't really wanna have multiple pages or artboards. We really just wanna work in one section um, as UXers and then kind of move the artboards around from section to section. Challenge is we can't always do that because when we have prototypes, most of the time we can only have one prototype for one file. That's not the case with XD. XD, you're able to go in and assign different flows depending on where you are. So let's say I have my mobile flow here and all of my triggers are set up. So you click these little buttons and you can have a little string and say where you want it to go to. So I say, okay, I want this screen to just go here uh, and you can choose different types of triggers, whether it's a time, a drag, tap, keys, voice, multiple different types. But unfortunately, we're not gonna have time to go over that today. We're just going over the differences. And one of the cool things I'm gonna show you about prototyping, I'm gonna bring up my notes here. Ah, flows. So the way flows work is if I want a new one, let's say I want someone to do my desktop experience instead, I just click the home button and it gives me a new flow. It gives me a new place to start and all of my prototype wires are still connected. So if you want a different entry point or at a different time, or even added with a different breakpoint, you can actually have multiple uh, different types of prototypes um, for you know, different people. So whoever needs a certain, you know, one type of screens versus another, you can do so in the same file. Another thing about prototyping that's really unique is how the animation works. So let's say I wanna make a spinner. I just want these four little dots to spin. That's all. Now, what I've done, uh, I'm not doing 3D with these, uh, is I've set each one of these elements up as different rotations. So each of them has 90 degrees. So this one's at zero degrees. This one's at 90. This one's at 180. This was a 270. So it's pretty much one whole circle. But what exactly does that do? So because I've prototyped these to connect to one another, each one of these kind of goes in a loop. So one screen goes to this, this one goes to this, this one goes to that. If I want to look at this, let's take a look at the preview and see what it does. So because I have auto animate on, 
And because I've changed the easing to bounce and I've given it you know, a certain duration, you're able to do really quick micro interactions and animations without having to go anywhere else. Don't have to go to principal, don't have to go to Marvel, don't have to no coffee script. You just have to know where your items are, where they're placed, and then be able to give them commands based on those placement and auto animate does the rest of the work. Okay. Next. Next, we're gonna to go to preview. So the way preview works is when you design and interact, we design these prototypes, uh, you can preview them here, kind of like we were seeing earlier, uh, but just like the multi-device where you're able to have it on the phone or your tablet or on your local screen, there's no lag. Like Sketch has a mirror and you have to upload it. You don't have to do that. Any change you make on your, on your actual work will be reflected in real time on any device you have. And preview is really cool because you can choose pretty much whatever you want, whenever you want. And going through this makes it just very, very simple. Um, I've chosen to have hotspots turned off because I wanted, let's say, user testing instead. So if I only wanted just to be able to track where people are and where they're clicking, I have multiple different ways to be able to get them to this place. And I can have different effects. So if I'm just doing this for uh, early prototyping, then I can have hotspots to lead people through lo-fi prototypes. And if I want high fidelity prototypes uh, to get rid of my assumptions and guidance, then you can just delete the hotspots together. And it doesn't affect the prototype at all. Next, one of my favorites is collaboration and sharing. This is a whole other section within the platform. The cool thing about this is that you can choose what you wanna share. So here, I only wanna share this one flow. Uh, but, let's, but let's talk about exactly what this, what this can do. So design previews are meant to be shared with other people over the web. So XD makes it very easy to do both commenting and collaboration. Security and confidentiality is a concern. These links and these design previews can be password protected or shared privately with certain users. So you can choose different settings and flows depending on the type of feedback or output that you're looking for. So let's say I'm over here and uh, I want this flow to be tested. Well, what do I wanna be tested for? Well, um, I can choose from design review, which has all the hotspots and all most of the information there. I can share with development, which actually ends up, you know what, let's, uh, let's take a look at that. What happens when I wanna share with development? Well, it ends up making a, a public link or private link, depending on the security that I want and gives me that link file. Let's say I take a peek at it and I wanna go see what it looks like. So here's my commenting, and in the same page, I'm able to switch to uh, uh, to a developer view where it's got the viewport size, design size, colors, character styles, interactions. Everything is here. Nothing is missing. And as you highlight over certain elements, you're able to gain padding, find out exactly where things are located, what they are, what their properties are. It's one of the simplest ways, and it's way better than Zeppelin. So sharing assets and design specs really cannot be easier. Uh, it enables precise communication between designers and, and, and developers or designers and designers. And it allows everyone to share things between different screen sizes and colors of objects and type properties, uh, all that stuff. So there's a lot that XD can do. So the benefits of what I feel XD really has is like it's an end-to-end -end experience design solution, one application. All the stuff that we've had to kind of force feed other programs to do, like make it in Sketch and then have all of your assets hosted on, you know, some other platform and then, you know, have your CSS widgets built into that as well. And then on top of that, being able to have, uh, you know, you know, being able to collaborate and being able to, with, you know, pull out information. XD does just about everything. And it also has a massive plugin library, just like Sketch and Figma and all the other standardized tools. So if you're looking for something like, oh, I just want to grab icons or I just want, you know, mock photos of people or whatever, it will get you there. And most of them are free. So I, I, I one of the things I really like about it is how quick it is. It's so fast. It is has basically an infinite canvas, but let's be real, these programs can handle about like a gig worth of space and at the most. But for this type of work, that's perfect. Uh, it is platform agnostic. It works on just about everything. 
Uh, it has really cool design tools that other programs just don't have. Uh, it's got the ability to prototype in just about any type of feature and function that's available today. It also has multiple methods for previewing prototypes on desktop and mobile devices. You can share them securely or publicly. You can share design specs and assets, and you're still in the Adobe ecosystem. So even though like, like we can build a lot of icon, uh, icons and things inside Figma or inside Sketch, most of the time we default back to Illustrator when we're building icon sets, iconography, and illustration work. So when that work is being converted to SVG, you can just dump it right into XD and there is no, there's no problems, no loss, no color, desaturation, no profile changes. It's all the same. 